They say necessity is the mother of invention. Well, my next guest got super inventive with her Chicago whiskey and gin distillery. Nearly overnight, she transformed her business into a hand sanitizer factory. We have the owner of Cole Distillery on the line right now, Sonnet Biernickerhart. Hey, what's up, Sonnet? First of all, you're at the whiskey store right now, right? Tell us about it. Yes, we are at the store. Okay, so tell us about it. What is it? Everybody can go here and get some whiskey? Absolutely. This is our first original uh, distillery. This is where we do tours and tastings and workshops. It's where people can sort of touch and feel and learn about the process. They can see things like this barrel behind us that has plexiglass so you can see how the whiskey ages and takes on color. Yeah. And that's what we do here. But we outgrew this facility, uh, which was the first distillation. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we have heard a while ago, but it, it, this was our first distillery since the mid 1800s in Chicago. So we we're happy to like, grow and grow. And now we have another facility up the street. It's about 46,000 square feet. And that's where we do most of our production of whiskey and gin and all of our other distilled spirits. And now hand sanitizer, where my team right now is working around the clock, making it obviously wearing you know, face coverings and full yeah. protection to do so. And yeah, yeah that's, that's what we're up to these days. So how did you decide to start making hand, hand sanitizer and how did you even know how to make hand sanitizer? <laughs> well, you know, we, we saw what was coming. In a way, we were an international brand. So our colleagues in Europe, they were dealing with this virus uh, it, a lot a lot sooner than we were and so they were talking about these kinds of needs uh, for PPE and hand sanitizer we knew that we could make it you know we had the right equipment for it but we also knew that we were not legally allowed to do it so that presented a challenge in the beginning so like many distilleries in the United States that that had the right equipment to produce hand sanitizer we all sort of banded together a lot of people reached out to our trade organizations we reached out to the TTB, which is our regulating agency in the government, to say, you know, we're, we need to do this. There's a great need. Um, it needs to be legal for distilleries that make, you know, uh, alcohol for consumption to mm -hmm. also be allowed to make it for other things. And so this was in mid-March. And on March 19th, um, in the evening, I got the email saying that we were allowed to do it. Wow. So we worked, you know, that was a Thursday night. We worked through the weekend. And then Monday morning, we had our first big batch. And I was delivering it out to the Chicago Police Department. You know, it was, it was a big process, you know, sort of gearing up and pivoting this way. But now we're, we're fully operational in this sense. And we're making about 700 gallons of hand sanitizer a day. Um, and we're still donating and, you know, also for, for sale as well. How much did you like initially plan on making that? How much did you think you would do? You probably didn't think you'd be here right now, right? No, no, but yeah, months later, no. I mean, originally we wanted to do it as a goodwill gesture, just to do a few batches of hand sanitizer that they were that we were then going to just donate to first responders and those on the front lines. Oh, and wow. and when we did that, we received so many requests from people in absolute need. I mean, these are shelters food kitchens. There are so many people really on the front lines here, you know, beyond the, the those in the health industry. I mean, they are as well. And, and you know, we, we, we wanted to keep donating, donating, but we couldn't do it into bankruptcy. And so yeah. we said, well, how are we going to do this? We need help. You know, we, we need to reach out to our community. And so we started a GoFundMe page and we received such an outpouring of love and help people from all over the world, really, from Taiwan, Canada, England, and of course, you know, America throughout uh, were sending us uh, donations so that we could continue to keep buying all the ingredients and make hand sanitizer and get it out to first responders. And so, you know, we, we did this with the help of others. It wasn't really just alone and not just the financial assistance, we had help from bottle companies, um, the, we had help from delivery companies that wanted to help us deliver all this hand sanitizer because it was a huge operation to you know, just get what we made out to those who needed it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is really a community coming together to make this happen. Thank you so much, Sonnet. What you're doing is incredible and it's thinking of others and outside of yourself. What a great ripple effect you're starting. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Please don't make me keep going.